If you have some time, check out Alexandria. It's one of the greatest cities in antiquity. Welcome to Jean-Francois Champollion. Between the 5th century CE and the Renaissance, knowledge of hieroglyphs was entirely lost. Many enthusiasts tackled the challenge of deciphering the language with little success. Some groundwork was made with various researchers identifying names and some grammatical structure and confirming that cartouches were markers for royal names. They were still missing a critical piece of information that would eventually be revealed thanks to the discovery of the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone was found in 1799 by Bouchard, a soldier in Napoleon's army. The stele dates from 196 BCE, written in ancient Egyptian and Greek with three scripts, hieroglyphics, demotic, and Greek alphabet. Following the defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte in 1801, the English took possession of the stone. It has been at the British Museum since 1802 and remains the most visited object of the museum to date. The first translation was of the Greek section only in 1803. It detailed a decree of Pharaoh Ptolemy V, reminding the citizens that their Pharaoh had led Egypt to prosperity. It was fully translated 20 years after by Jean-Francois Champollion, who was working with a facsimile. Through his studies of the stone, Champollion was able to make a critical observation that would unlock the whole mystery, that hieroglyphics were not only ideograms, but also phonograms. Hieroglyphs consist of phonetic glyphs, single characters, and logograms. Essentially, they are a combination of phonetics, alphabet, and full words, which in total form a language. While studying the stone, Champollion realized that there was a difference in the number of hieroglyphic characters in relation to the number of Greek characters for the same word. This led him to believe that hieroglyphs must have phonetic characteristics. This was the first step to unlocking the Rosetta Stone's secrets. To prove this theory, Champollion began identifying Egyptian rulers' names and then compared their phonetic pronunciation to the Greek version. For example, Cheops had been the Greek name given by ancient chroniclers to the owner of the Great Pyramid, Khufu. The next step for Champollion was to confirm that his approach was verifiable by using the Philae obelisk as an additional reference. Engraved in the obelisk are two inscriptions in Egyptian hieroglyphs and Greek. Once he confirmed the names of Ptolemy and Cleopatra within these texts and confirmed the same phonetic patterns as on the Rosetta Stone, Champollion knew he was on the right track. Champollion had already mastered several ancient languages when he took on deciphering the Rosetta Stone. He used his knowledge of Coptic to identify the solar disk hieroglyph on the obelisk as the phonetic translation of Ra. Further translation only strengthened his conclusion. Egyptian hieroglyphs encompass the alphabet in both phonetics and determinative ways, which means that the symbol represents the word itself. 